Over the course of history, Baldur's Gate 3 got 4 new playable classes in the updates. First we've got the Druid, then the Sorcerer, the Barbarian and last but not least the Bard. But there are 2 classes still missing from the game, the Paladin and the Monk. So in this video I'm going over the basic information of these classes and what you can expect from them. And if you like watching my videos, please consider subscribing because it helps me more than you think. Okay, so let's first start with the Paladin. They are divine warriors who follow an oath, and they have the power to heal the injured, smite their enemies and protect their allies. Paladins use strength as their main stat and charisma as their secondary stat. At level 3 they can 3 different subclasses, but I'll cover them later. Because first, let's start at level 1. At first level, Paladins can detect Celestials, Fiends and Undeads in nearby range with their Divine Sense. Additionally, they have a healing pool from their ability called Lay on Hands, which can of course heal their allies, but also cure diseases and poisons. The HP Restore is equal to 5 times your Paladin level, and nonetheless a very fun ability to use. At second level, Paladins are able to cast spells. Many of the spells are the same from the Cleric spell list, but some are unique to the Paladin, and you can bet they are very cool. Many of their spells are different kind of smites that deal damage, like Searing Smite for example, dealing fire damage on a hit and dealing fire damage over time if the creature fails their saving throw. But I'm actually talking about cooler spells that they earn later, and hopefully will make it into Baldur's Gate 3. Like the Find Steed spell, which Paladins can access from level 5. Ok, so you can summon a mount both inside and outside combat that fight beside you and of course you can ride it as well. Standard options include a warhorse, pony, camel, elk or a mastiff, but it can be other animals as well. Ok, so Larian can get really creative here and also let you ride an all bear for example. Even though it isn't really a beast, it counts for one in Baldur's Gate 3, so why not? This is one of the many reasons why Paladins are such a cool and wanted class. They also get a fighting style like rangers and fighters at this level, so you can specialize in two-handed weapons or ranged ones for example. And of course they also get their iconic Divine Smite, one of the strongest Paladin abilities dealing 2d8 radiant damage on a hit only using a first level spell slot. And if the target is an undead or a fiend, they receive an additional AD8 damage. So, for example, let's say you hit an undead with a longsword and smite them. You deal 4d8 plus 3 damage only using one first level spell slot. Again, very strong and very cool. Starting at level 3, Paladins have divine health, making them immune to diseases. And they also get their sacred oath and get to choose their subclass. The first one is the Oath of Devotion, basically the stereotype Paladin. Also at level 3, they can imbue their weapon with bright light that deals additional damage. And they can also turn the undead just like clerics. They also receive the following spells. And if you want to know more information on them, pause the video and search them up if you want. The second subclass is the Oath of the Asians. And are paladins most attuned with nature. At level 3 they can summon spectral vines around a creature, restraining them until they save a saving throw and they can also turn the fey and fiend creatures. They also receive the following spells and again feel free to pause and search them up if you want to. Last but certainly not least is the Oath of Vengeance Paladin, basically the Retribution Paladin and are typically Avengers. At level 3 they gain 2 channel divinity options. The strongest one is that they gain advantage on attack rolls against a creature for 10 turns or until it dies. And I really love that ability because it's so immensely strong. The second one is frighten any creature reducing its movement speed to zero. And fiends and undeads have disadvantages against this saving throw. Oh and they also gain the following spells. And again you know what to do if you want to know more about them. At level 4 they gain the ability score improvements or can pick a feat just like all the other classes. And at level 5 they can attack twice a turn just like fighters and rangers. But level 5 isn't even in early access yet so let's stop there for now. That was basically it for the paladins at early levels but now it's time for the monk. They are martial artists and focus on their key, which can deliver devastating blows and dodge incoming projectiles. Monks use dexterity as their main stat and wisdom as their secondary stat. They also gain 3 different subclasses at level 3, but again I'll cover them later. Cause let's start at level 1 again. At first level, monks gain extra armor class thanks to their unarmored defense. You only get this feature when you don't wear any armor or shield. But this doesn't mean you have to run around naked because you can still wear clothes. Or not, whatever you prefer. You can also run around naked. Whatever you choose, the armor class you have will be equal to 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom score. So if you optimize your character well enough, that will mean you have 16 armor class at level 1. That's the same as a fighter with chainmail armor. But you get to choose to run around naked with the same armor class. Hooray for monks. 
They also get extra damage with martial attacks at first level, dealing more damage with unarmed strikes and also for their bonus action attacks as well. At second level they can 10 feet extra movement speed and finally master their key. And with their key they can do several cool martial stuff using a key point, like flurry of blows. Striking twice only using their bonus action, which means they can now strike three times in a row. But they can also dodge, disengage, dash and doubling their jump distance for example using a key point. At third level monks are able to catch or deflect ranged weapon attacks like arrows. You can reduce the incoming damage and if the damage will be zero you are able to throw it back using your reactions and the key point. Yep, monks are very cool as well. Also at level 3 they gain their monastic tradition, which is a fancy word for their subclass. The first one is called Way of the Open Hand and it's more your traditional monk. At level 3 when you use your Furry of Blows, fur Furry of Blows? When you use your Flurry of Blows you can try to knock your enemy prone or push them away or it can take reactions until the end of your next turn. Simple but efficient. And at level 6 they gain the ability to heal themselves. The second subclass is called Way of the Shadow and are more like ninjas. At third level they can cast the following ninja like spells using two key points and also learn the minor illusion cantrip. And if you want to know what they all mean pause the video and search them up. Starting at level 6 you can also teleport in dim and dark areas using your bonus action and also gain advantage on your first melee attack. Last but certainly not least is the way of the four elements and if you watched avatar you know what this means. As the name suggests you are able to control the four elements and you are cool as hell. At third level you are able to cast some elemental spells using your key points like burning hands, gust of wind or a special technique called water whip. And at higher levels they can cast even more spells like the fly spell for example. And that's basically it for the four elements monk, just more and stronger spells as you level up. At level 4, all monks get the ability score improvement or can pick a feat but also gain the slow fall ability. As the name suggests, you will think you fall slower but you actually don't, you just take less falling damage. But who knows, maybe in Baldur's Gate 3 you will fall slower just like Featherfall. And at level 5, they also gain their extra attack ability and the powerful stunning strike skill. That means whenever you hit a creature with a melee weapon attack, you can spend one key point to stun the target and if they fail their saving throw they of course be stunned. And the melee weapon attack also counts for your fist, so be prepared to stun a lot of enemies from this level on. But again, since level 5 isn't even an early access, we'll stop there. There is also a third new class, which is the Artificer. But this didn't come in the core rules of Dungeons and Dragons, so I don't think they will make it into the game. But who knows, maybe if Baldur's Gate 3 gets DLC post launch it will be a DLC class. Anyway, which class are you most looking forward to, the Paladin or the Monk? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, thank you all for watching, subscribe if this was helpful and if you want to see more Baldur's Gate 3 videos. And I will see you next time.